Some of you understand what you're about to get into. Ah boy, here we go. In three of my videos, I have mentioned a certain teacher of mine, a certain mentally unstable, vindictive teacher. Wow, we're just gonna go right there? Given that one of those videos has over 7 million views at the moment, people are getting a little curious about this infamous educator from my past. I have several questions. Well, gird thy loins, explainers and entertainers. Bad touch, bad touch, stranger danger. Because we're finally talking about it, here we go. This is the story of my emotionally abusive high school theater teacher. This is gonna be a good game. Kick it, let's start the party. Jumptron. Now, because it is theater, I know I run the risk of sounding like a crybaby whining over their teacher not giving them the lead part in the play, and trust me, I completely understand people like that exist. I've been in theater a long time. I don't see anything wrong with that. But I'd like to think that this story has more to do with me being in an unhealthy authority figure relationship. I'm not a martyr here, I guarantee others have had it far worse, but this woman did her damage. Ah, We'll call her Medusa. You look like a snake! And fun fact number one, that was her actual nickname and she wore it like a freaking badge of honor. No joke, she put up a sign on the backstage door that said, keep out, beware Medusa. Boy, that should have been a warning in more ways than one. I, I couldn't make this shit up. I couldn't make this shit up if I tried. I'm sad that I lack the talent to make this shit up. Okay, so I met Medusa my first year of high school. She was the only teacher running the entire theater department, so no matter what type of theater class you took, she would be teaching it. She also ran the theater club and directed all the after-school plays. All casting decisions were left up to her. You're catching my drift. She had a totalitarian grip on every aspect of this theater department. There was no other adult there to balance her out or, more importantly, witness her behavior. Now this is the point where most people, like 99% of people, would do this. Out of this house! Out of this house! Spirits be gone from this house. But this isn't most people. When I stepped onto a stage, I was a completely different person. I could be strong and brave, confident and clever. I could show the world what I was made of. Performing was my release, my therapy. I guess that's why I didn't immediately take a powder when I learned how crazy this theater teacher was. <laughs> We were going to do the comedic play Noises Off. And in that show, there is a role called Dottie meant for an older woman who needed a Cockney accent and had a boy toy love interest. Hilarious. So naturally, being the oldest girl in the theater department, having a plump, middle-aged looking body, being able to do a pretty great Cockney accent, and being a senior meant that the stars were finally aligning in my favor. Beautiful. And the day before the audition, I was hanging out in the theater club room and I told another student that I was hoping for the part of Dottie and Medusa overheard. She looked right at me, smiled, nodded very obviously, and gave me a big thumbs up. Gee, Becca, it sounds like your chances of getting this part are pretty good. I know, right? That's what I thought too. But gosh golly darn it, call me M. Night Shyamalan because this story has a twist. I went to the audition, gave it everything I had, knocked it out of the park, was the only girl who could do a Cockney accent. The bougiest! But the next morning, Medusa posted the cast on the bulletin board, and... nothing. She didn't even cast me. Not even once. Excuse me, Medusa. I was wondering, why didn't you cast me? Oh, it's because you were too tall. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? T too tall? Yes, only short guys auditioned, and I needed your love interest to be taller than you. I get it. I don't get it. Funny thing about that excuse, she had cast the only senior as my love interest, and he was, in fact, taller than me. So yeah, she flat out lied to my face. Excuse me, what? But, because I think I was in shock, 
I didn't question it at that moment, and I just walked away. Are you fucking serious? Turns out the truth eventually came out because a couple days later, some concerned tech theater girls told me they heard Medusa say something in passing conversation with the other students. The reason I didn't cast Becca is because she's not one of the group. She keeps to herself way too much and doesn't have any friends. What? What the fuck? She didn't cast me because I wasn't popular. You think I'm gonna keep going after that? <sighs> Can't do that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm moving on. <laughs> That's it. I am done. I am out. Goodbye. I am over this insanity. You ain't dragging me down with you, sister. Peace. Adios. Sayonara. Dasvidaniya. Bonsoir. And all those other different languages. Consider this my final bow because we are done here. Thanks for the memories. You'll make a great YouTube video someday. Bye bye. Damn. And I left. I left and went straight to my advisor to drop out of all of Medusa's classes. Which my advisor was very happy to do for me when she learned which teacher I was trying to escape. Oh yeah, she's crazy. Consider it done. I'll be honest, the situation was a little bit more complicated than just not being given the part that I wanted. There was so much more. But this video is long enough already. Son of a bitch! And let me tell you something, explainers and entertainers. The moment I left, I felt like a completely different person. My confidence shot through the roof, I was happier, I didn't care so much what people thought anymore. Heck, even guys were paying more attention to me. My choir director noticed the change and gave me the award for most improved senior. I didn't even have to give up my love of theater because I went out and auditioned for community theater with adults. I even got a leading part in a musical that summer and won the Best Actress Award for the show season at that particular theater. Everything had fallen into place for me, and all because I finally worked up the courage to say I deserve better and walk away from a toxic relationship. These situations don't always end like fairy tales, but for me, it did. Sweet release. So, what happened to Medusa? A couple years after I graduated, I remember hearing the news that she had been forced to resign. Oh boy, here we go! I can't be 100% sure if this is the true story, so take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt, but this was the story I was told. Oh, my favorite! Medusa got incredibly intoxicated on an overnight competition trip with students, locked herself in the boys' hotel room, and passed out on the bed, forcing the boys to sleep in the girls' room. Yeah. I mean, knowing her, that completely makes sense. When I first heard, I wasn't surprised in the slightest. I guess all I can say is, peace out, Medusa. Wherever you are these days, I hope you're in a better place mentally and emotionally. I mean that. Hey, at least she taught me that a bad situation in the past doesn't have to weigh you down. Because if I'm honest, I'm pretty sure it was my time spent with Medusa that taught me how to stand up to an even worse teacher later on down the line. Died the way he lived, like a goddamn psychopath. Ten out of ten. I'm ready, I'm ready. That's all, folks. Jumptron.